Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we're going to do some tutorial discussion for chapter 2, thermochemistry. But now we're going to focus on 2.2 calorie metry. So for today, we're going to focus on three questions, which is tutorial question 3B, tutorial question 4, and tutorial question 5 respectively. So without any further ado, let us start. So for question 3B, a bomb calorie metric experiment is performed with powdered xylose, which is C5H10O5, as the combustible substance. Alright, so this one is acting as the bahan baka or the fuel for the experiment. So the, the, the data obtained are the mass of the xylose bone, which is 1.83 gram, the heat capacity of the calorie meter, which is 4.728 uh, kilojoule per degree Celsius, initial calorimetric temperature, which is 23.29 degrees Celsius, and the final calorimetric temperature, which is 27.19 degrees Celsius. So the setup that you will be imagining is to be something like this, where the xylose here is going to have the mass of 1.183 gram. And then the insulated container or the calorie meter will have the heat capacity of 4.7 to 8 kilojoule per degree Celsius. And the change in temperature is delta T here, where 27.19 minus 23.29 degrees Celsius. All right. And as you will be able to imagine, the xylose will be burned and there will gonna be the heat release to the surrounding. So the heat release will be absorbed directly by the calorie meter here. Okay. So in order for us to do question number one, uh, we can say that the heat given out or the heat released by the xylose will be absorbed by the calorie meter. And you can say that Q is equal to C delta T, where C refers to the heat capacity of the calorie meter. So the heat capacity of the calorie meter is 4.7 to 8 kilojoule per degree Celsius, and the change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. 27.19 minus 23.29. So the heat released by um, xylose, which absorbed by the calorie meter, uh, going to be 18.44 kilojoule. Okay, but this one is the heat released by xylose for only for 1.183 gram. Okay, but now we need to find for one mole of the xylose. Here is only for 8.183 gram. So first, we need to find the number of mole of the xylose first, which is mass divided by molar mass. So the mass used in this experiment is 1.183. The molar mass is C5H10O5, where we have to find the molar mass 12 times 5, 10 of hydrogen multiplied by 1, and 16 multiply by 5. So the mole of xylose that we will get is 7.89 times 10 to the power of negative 3 mole. So what we can understood from here is that the 7.89 times 10 to the power of negative 3 mole of xylose produces 18.44 kilojoule energy. But now we need for one mole of xylose. If for one mole of xylose, how much energy is being released. So we can use a ratio or the stoichiometry where one mole of H, sorry, one mole of xylose produces X energy. So we can cross multiply here and in order to find the energy released by one mole of xylose. So the heat of combustion by one mole of xylose is equal to 18.44 multiplied by one divided by 7.89 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So, once you do the maths here, you will get negative 2337.14 kilojoule per mole. Alright, so this is the heat release by combustion for one mole of xylos. Now, we have to write the thermochemical equation for the combustion of xylos. So, xylos the, the mean by combustion or the enthalpy of combustion is 1 mole 
of xylos is burned in excess oxygen in order to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so the keyword that we need to ensure here is here gonna be one mole. Okay, so you need to ensure that this one gonna be one mole. So the next steps that you're gonna do here is to balance the equation. So C5, H10O5, so you have five carbon here. So you can write five carbon, and then you have 10 hydrogen here. So 10 hydrogen here got two hydrogen, so you can put five. Okay. Okay. So now on the left hand, on the right hand side, you have five carbon, five carbon, five, 10 hydrogen. And then you have 15 oxygen, five from here and 10 from here. So you're going to have 15 oxygen. But on the left hand side, you have five carbon, 10 hydrogen, okay, 10 hydrogen, and oxygen, you only have seven, but here, going to have 15. So what you're going to do is you need to balance the oxygen that, that is here, which is you can put five. So five times two going to be 10, plus five here, going to have 15 oxygen. So left hand side, is the same as the right hand side 10 hydrogen and 10 hydrogen 15 oxygen and 15 oxygen all right so you can try to convince yourself in order to balance the equation once again and please pause the video and check your answer here okay now once you do that you need to write the thermochemical equation so you have the balance equation but for the thermochemical equation, you need to write the enthalpy change on the right hand side of the equation. So what you can do is um, C5 H10O5 plus the equation that you have construction that you have constructed, which is 5O2 gas, equal to 5 carbon dioxide gas plus 5 H2O liquid. And the enthalpy change here is gotten from the first question, which is number one here, negative. 2337.14 kilojoule per mole. So on the right hand side of the equation, you need to include this one. Okay. Also remember, you have to include the face of the species that you wrote. Okay. So for the more chemical equation, you have to need to have the balance equation. You need to write the face and the enthalpy of the reaction for one mole of the substance that is being burned here. All right, so that's for question number three. Let's move on to question number four. Okay, for tutorial question four, a quantity of 1.922 gram of methanol was burned in the constant volume bomb calorimeter. Consequently, the temperature of the water will rise by 4.2 degrees Celsius. So, if the quantity of water surrounding the calorimeter was exactly 2000 gram and the heat capacity of the calorimeter was 2.2 kilojoule per degree Celsius, calculate the molar heat combustion of the methanol. So what is meant by molar heat combustion of methanol is we need to find the kilojoule per mole by combustion. All right. So, um, Given here also is the specific heat capacity of water, which is CW, small letter C, and W refer to water, which is 4.18 joule per gram per degree Celsius. So the setup that you will be imagining is to be something like this, where the methanol will be placed inside the bomb calorimeter, which a mass of 1.922 1 gram. And then, uh, by the combustion of the methanol, the temperature will rise by 4.2 degrees Celsius. And the water that's surrounding it has a mass of 2000, and 2000 gram. And the heat capacity of the insulated container or the calorimeter, which labeled by the big C and heat capacity of calorimeter, which is 2.02 
kilojoule per degree Celsius. Okay. And the concept that applies here is that when a reactant, which is the methanol, is burned in a bomb calorimeter, the heat release will be absorbed by the water surrounding it as well as the insulated container. Haba yang dibebaskan daripada pembakaran metanol akan diserap oleh air di sekelilingnya dan juga oleh kalorimeter tersebut. So, what we can do is that um, the heat of the reaction gonna be the heat absorbed by the water surrounding it and the heat absorbed by the calorimeter. So, um, we can use the formula of MW which is the mass of the water and small letter C here refers to the specific heat capacity of water and delta T here refers to the change in temperature. And the, for the calorimeter, we use heat capacity. So let big letter C and C small letter C here refers to the calorimeter. And delta T is still the same, which is 4.2. So we're going to substitute that in. So mass of water is 2000, specific heat of water, which is 4.18. Delta T here is 4.2. Um, heat capacity of calorimeter is 2.2 kilojoule per degree Celsius and delta T here is 4.2 and then we're going to solve this side first which is 35.112 kilojoule and here refers to 8.484 so the summation of both heat, re heat absorbed by water and heat absorbed by the calorimeter is 43.596 kilojoule so negative here refers to the heat released by combustion. Okay. Now, um, the heat uh, that released by combustion is only refers to 1.922 gram of the methanol. Okay. But we need to find for one mole of the methanol. So we need to find the number of mole of the methanol used in the experiment first. Okay. So the number of mole of the methanol can be calculated by dividing mass with its molar mass. So mass in the equation is 1.922 gram. The molar mass of the methanol is 12 plus 3 plus 16 and plus 1. So it's going to be 32. So mass divided by molar mass, you will get 0 0.06 mole of methanol. So 0 0.06 mole of methanol will produce negative which is the heat release 43.596 kilojoule but how about one mole of the methanol so we can denote uh, the heat change for one mole of methanol as x so we need to find x now so we can find that by cross multiplication so one multiplied by 43.596 divided by 0 0.06 so x here will get negative 7 to 6.60 kilojoule. Therefore, we can say that the heat, the molar heat of combustion of the methanol equal to the negative, which is the heat release, 7 to 6.60 kilojoule per mole. Alright, okay, for tutorial question 5, when 200 ml of 0 0.1 molar of NaOH was mixed with 150 ml of 0 0.1 molar of HCl in the styrofoam cup, which is the coffee cup calorimeter, the temperature rose from 25 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. So we have to find the heat of neutralization in kilojoule per mole. So we can assume that the specific heat of the solution is the same as water, which is C, small c solution, equal to 4.18 joule per gram per degree Celsius. And the density of the solution is 1 gram per ml. Okay, and the setup that you will be imagining to be in a beaker, you will have 200 ml of 0 0.1 molar of NaOH mixed together with HCl, which is also 1 molar, and with a volume of 150 ml. So they are mixed together and stir. Okay, so therefore, by mixing both of the base and acid together, the heat will gonna be released to the solution, and this will cause the increase in temperature, where 
final minus initial, 30 minus 25, going to have an increase of temperature as 5 degrees Celsius. Okay, and the total volume of the solution going to increase, which is volume total, 200 plus 150 ml equal to 350 ml. Okay, but in order to find the heat release by the neutralization, we don't need the volume. Instead, we need to find the total mass. Okay, so the total mass can be obtained by the density. So if it is 350 ml, you will get 350 gram because it, the ratio is 1 to 1. Okay, so to prove that, density is equal to 1 gram per ml. So mass over volume is equal to 1. So mass, we need to find out mass and the volume is 350. So gram per ml here and here is ml. So once we pass across the 350 ml, we will get the mass as 350 gram. All right. So as mentioned, the heat um, due to the mix of base and acid well, produces heat in the solution, so heat released by the solution. So we're going to measure the heat by the solution due to the mixing. So the equation that you will be imagining to get is uh, sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid going to produce an ACL, which is the salt, and also the water. So one mole of water is produced here. So the heat can be um, find out by getting the mass of the solution, which is ms here, the mass, the total mass of the solution, 350 gram. The specific heat capacity of the solution is 4.18, and the temperature change is obtained here, which is 5 degrees Celsius. So we can substitute the info here. So 350 multiplied by 4.18 multiplied by 5 degrees Celsius, and the heat change uh, going to have is 7315 joule. Okay, but we need to find the heat of neutralization in kilojoule per mole. So we have to find the number of mole of the base and also the acid first. Okay, and to find the number of mole of acid and base, we can use N is equal to MV over 1000. Okay, where V here is in ML. Or you can use MV where V here is in liter. Either one. So, um, so I convert that into liter first. So the number of mole of NaOH is m, which is the molarity one, multiplied by two times ten to power of negative three to convert it to liter. So the number of mole of NaOH is zero point two. Now I need to find the number of mole of HCl, which is mv. So v I convert that to liter, and the number of mole of HCl that I use in the experiment is zero point one five. So from here, since the stoichiometry is 1 to 1, you know that 0.145 mole of HCl will react with 0.15 mole of NaOH to produce 0.15 mole of water. So from here, you know that this one is the limiting reactant. Meanwhile, this one is the excess reactant. So we need to depend on our limiting reactant because these are the ones that produce 1 mole of water or 0.15 mole of H2O. So 0.15 mole of HCl is the limiting reactant that produces 0.15 mole of water. So 0.15 mole of water that is produced uh, produces 7315 joule of heat. So how about 1 mole of water? So how 1 mole of water is obtained from the um, cross multiplication as I shown in the previous example. So once you do the math, you will get 4 at 7, 6, 6 and you can convert that into kilojoule. Hence, you can say that the heat of neutralization for the neutralization between NUH and HCl is negative 48.8 kilojoule per mole. Alright, I think that's all for this video. See you again some other time. Bye!